diversify your bonds. Hey guys, we're aliens. It's not about eating a good sandwich, you know, it's about the people there. And that's what's more important. You can't live your life to the fullest if you don't have memes. That's a be careful. Sometimes you gotta take the plunge and just, you know, go for what you love. As long as I like it, I did not just dance to it. Well, if I want to be successful, people gotta know me. Alright, keep that same man. and all right what's up sponsors i hope you are all diversifying your bonds into small youtube channels like us we are please don't sue us what's good my name is ordeed in the house we have angelo the certified dad bod and we have uncle migs and today we're going to be talking to a general shit poster in here by the name of ms beetles uh, actually, is that how you want to be referred to? Sure, yeah, let's go for that. Okay, cool. Uh, and, yeah, so we're going to, uh, hang out, talk about some, uh, uh shitposting memes, uh, video games, and, uh, uh, it'll be a good time. But before we start off this podcast here, uh, a quick word from, uh, uh from a person. What's going on, good people? I would like to take a minute to plug myself and a couple other sponsors. You may notice my my hit song with a K in the background, Chopped and Screwed. Um, the song is called With a K because I spell my name with a K in case you forgot. My name is Crisco. Find me on Instagram at Almighty Crisco. Find me at Twitter at Wet Pussy War Vet. And, uh, Spotify and all other uh, streaming platforms just at Crisco. Almighty Crisco on YouTube. I'd also like to take a second to give credit to the great people at MeUndies and the great people at Manscaped. Some of my favorite podcasters plug them. And you know. Well, uh, the people I like obviously would not plug something that is not a great product. So, yeah, I'm gonna just uh, leave the rest of this time to let the song kind of play out. Give you guys a little special treatment, a little preview. Um, shout out Jungle Life Studios. Oh, and shout out to the great people at We Know Smoke Shop. Wow, I uh, can't believe they sponsored this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> honestly guys i think we finally made it you know what this this channel right here is now gonna be number one watch out pewdiepie you suck okay we're the next up and coming channel i'm calling it right here right now we got that sponsorship okay ain't nobody gonna be able to compete i'm telling you yeah <laughs> so uh so dude uh ms beetles and or mark i'm just gonna uh, i'm gonna call you mark just because it's it's easy it's more comfortable yeah <laughs> yeah um but dude how are you doing man what's good yeah i'm just really happy to be like to be here i'm, I'm really glad you guys let me comment and share a bit my channel and, and what i do of course so your name is ms beetles and what is your uh, YouTube channel? Uh, it's my my name, Mark Sule Pages. <laughs> it's okay. in, in Catalan, but yeah. So y you've probably guessed that MS and B are my initials. Mm -hmm. So so, and I obviously like the Rolling Stones a lot. No, ah. the, the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. So so I I guess put my initials together and then the Beatles. But I already had the Google account, so my channel is just Mark Sule Pages because. I'm too lazy to change it, to be honest. <laughs> so, one of the things that we came like when we when we came across you is um, we noticed that you uh, play a lot of Super Smash Bros. 
Uh, which yeah. which version? Ultimate. Uh, because I, I used to play on the Wii, the Wii version, the, the Brawl, mm -hmm. with my sister when I was like 8 or 10 years old, and I loved it. And the thing is that when I play with my sister, she doesn't let me win. Even if I am winning, she just tells me, no, <laughs> you gotta kill yourself, because you took a stock from me, so now you gotta take a stock from yourself. And when 4 came out, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna try to get good at this game, and and try to go to competitions and stuff, but I didn't like 4, so I waited for Ultimate, and, and since it's the, the last version, and, and the last iteration of the game, I went for for this one. Mm -hmm. I'd argue that it's uh, uh, that's the best one, too. It's got, they even said, everyone is here. They got yeah, everyone literally. from every Smash Bros. I'm, I'm a little hurt by Ultimate, though, because my main was Mr. Game & Watch, and they they like messed up one of his like uh, his uh, uh, aer aerials. Yeah, the uh, one with the bump, right? Yeah, dude, that sucks. That leaves me <laughs> open. I hate it. It's it's so bad. I I don't play Mr. Game and Watch just because of that aerial because it's a really fun character with a hammer and everything. But mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's yeah, it, really bad. It ruined me. I had to pick a new main. <laughs> it sucks. One thing that I've been uh, curious about, just like in terms of Smash, is I, occasion, on occasion, will Smash. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, one thing I've been curious about is I know that there's a competitive scene, like how prominent is that? Because um, I've never really touched it, I've mainly just played with friends, but I know that we can get to that level. I mean, it's quite. Uh, a big sin, but you know, I, I don't know how much you are into it, but it used to be like one of the best communities in in the in the gaming world, uh, in my opinion. I really like that everyone mm -hmm. seemed to have a lot of fun, except you know the typical person that lost and got salty. But like, I've I've never gotten into it either because I'm I'm at that level that I'm too good to play with my friends because I usually win and they get mad, but I'm not as good as I should be to compete. So I said, let's make shit posts. But, <laughs> like, three weeks, <laughs> uh, three weeks, three, three months ago, there was a, a really big, uh, like, an outbreak of, of cases of pedophilia and grooming in the Smash community. It was mind-numbing. I mean, there was, like, 30 professional players that got... Uh, it was, a, it was a lot of big guys. Yeah, rapists mm -hmm. and, and pedophiles. So I'm kind of glad I didn't get into that community, to be honest. Oh God, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 the uh, <laughs> the biggest, or one of the biggest Smash Bros. players, uh, Zero, I think he yeah. was uh, number one in Smash 4. Um, yeah, he won like 40 tournaments in a row or something like that. Really? Yeah, and uh, uh, he was... Uh, Actually, yeah. What what did happen to him? Because I he... I think yeah, it's 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 fucked up. I think he when he came because he's from from South America, mm -hmm. and when he came mm -hmm. to to the U.S. to make uh, like to participate in tournaments and everything, he used there, like many people used to share uh, like an Airbnb so they could save some money and. He mm -hmm. when he went to the tournaments, he used to share the Airbnb with this fifteen-year-old girl, girl. And Ooh. yeah, you can all guess. Okay. Yeah, like sending her, mm -hmm. let's say for work videos or like mm -hmm. telling her inappropriate stuff. Like yikes! I, I yeah, don't know. is that I can't that that's not the game though. The game does not do that to you. That is no. the people. That's no. just a toxic <laughs> community. <Yeah. laughs> the way they organize the tournaments. Uh, motivated the, the, that these things happen like it because if you you separate your tournaments like plus 18 and 12 to 18 and like kids playing mm -hmm. there should be no no such a problem but in smash you can always enter a tournament no matter your age no matter anything mm -hmm. so i think that that's it if you can if a 34 year old can enter a tournament where there's a 12 year old and this 34 year old is fucked in the head then he's gonna make some some fucked up stuff yeah it, it was pretty horrible 
Mm-hmm. When did this happen? I say leave the smash for the adults, you know. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, actually, dude, this happened this year. This yeah. happened this year. I think. Yeah. I think in August, there's a, a Reddit mega thread in the Smash uh, subreddit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Smash. Or, I guess it was discovered this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, exactly. That, yeah. Here, there's a summary of sexual and non-sexual allegations, and you can check it out if you want to, guys. It's uh, I'll send it in the chat. I, it's so many, so many players. <laughs> I don't know what happened, mm-hmm. but the game is is real fun, and if you play with friends, it's it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. That's the best uh, way to smash is with friends. Wait, what? Exactly what? with homies. With, with yeah, friends yeah, with that homies. are over you smash your homies. You smash your dude. <laughs> yeah. Wait, no, smash with your homies. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I can never um, let that joke go. That's one of my favorite things. About <laughs> <laughs> dude. So um, so were you you weren't involved with the uh, Smash community at all, right? Or I, even I like a gone local to scene? A, a couple of local tournaments like mm-hmm. in Spain. And and I actually was very happy because I, I had a friend who introduced me to the tournaments and everything. Well a friend, an acquaintance. And I, I was once at his house because he lives with a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. And he told me like, Hey, you wanna try a couple of games and see how the pro community is like a bit and everything? And I played mm-hmm. against him and I beat him half the time. So I felt pretty, pretty proud. He was like Top 14 in Barcelona or something like that. So I was like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> snap. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. But yeah, I haven't gone to any big tournaments, just small local ones. I didn't know we were talking with the Smash God. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> How big is the community in Spain? Because I know here in the US it's pretty big, and I know in like certain parts of Asia it's pretty big, but I don't know much about Europe. Yeah, because in Japan, like, everybody plays Smash. And in, in the US, a lot of people mm-hmm. play. But here in Spain, to the tournaments I went, like, Barcelona is quite a big city. It's like two and a half million people. Like, mm-hmm. not for US standards, but for Spanish standards. And um, the tournaments I went usually had around 100 people there, 150. Mm-hmm. Depending depending a lot on, on what this, for example, there was like, we have like a Comic Con, but for manga only, like for weeps. Mm-hmm. And I went there because I used to be a weeaboo. <laughs> yeah. And, and there were Smash tournaments there every year. And and it mm-hmm. was like 50, 70 people. Mm-hmm. But nothing super big. I mean, 50, 70 people to me, still pretty big. I don't know anything here in, in Santa Rosa that's that big. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's fair. For, for <laughs> Smash, anyways, and I'm always looking to Smash. Uh, I, I going back to uh, your videos, I I notice uh, uh, kind of similarities with uh, Alpha Rad. I don't I don't know if you know who Alpha Rad right. is. Yeah, I've, with I've the, seen a couple of videos from him. Yeah, with the kind of but, uh, uh, just memes and. Uh, all sorts of stuff that uh, you're doing because usually you'll get a kill and then he just like taunts the shit out of him with his like super crazy edited videos and that seemed like uh, the kind of thing that you were doing yeah I, like I obviously got the idea from watching bigger YouTubers and mm-hmm. I watched uh, Alfred I like a lot I like Little Z as well I don't know if you know him he's like one of the best for me one of the best YouTubers in, in the montage smash world and I also liked a lot um, uh, Mr. Danish Butter Cookie, who makes a lot of really cool videos. And and so I thought, what if I do what they do, but my way, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, because they they are really, really good. I'm not as good as they are, but I have some nice plays here and there. So I thought, hey, let's try. And okay. And I really like the results, so I said, let's keep doing that. <laughs> Hell yeah. And I loved watching the results. I was having such a fun time watching those videos. <laughs> nice. The, I'm glad. the memes are plentiful, and, and there's something you should know about me. Yeah. I love my memes. So. Mm-hmm. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I love my memes, mm-hmm. too. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm a, a shit poster at heart. <laughs> yeah. I think all of us are, really. Um, but would you say that they, uh, is there a particular one of them that influenced your editing style more than the others? Or is it like a smorgasbord of all of them, like working together when you like do your editing? I'm not sure. Like when I edit, I really like, uh, I really like to put in like, 
sometimes it just I have a clip and I think like well that would be perfect for this particular meme. Mm -hmm. But in general, I just edit the the video and I think okay, what shit? What kind of shit can I put in here? You know, like mm -hmm. some, for instance, in the Mar one there's a part that's a bit not safe for work. That's mm -hmm. you know, which I want someone. Can I say can I say plus eighteen words here? <laughs> Yeah. Yes, you can. <laughs> okay, Luigi is grabbing Mario's cock, and as he's jerking him off. Mm -hmm. There, I just had six six frames that I didn't know what to do, and I said, you know, one one rule thirty for Mario for frame. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, I, I think, wow, this is perfect for for a meme. Like I use a lot of of old vines. I use a lot of kind of overused memes that I like. So they are so overused that they stop being funny. But if you still use them, you can make them go back mm -hmm. to funny again because they are so 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 burnt up that they you laugh at. And my my favorite meme is is lost for for that reason. Uh, you know mm -hmm. the lost meme. The... Oh, uh, the, the, honestly, those memes are great because they've permeated like the entire internet, so everyone knows what it is. Exactly. So the second they yeah. see it, they identify with it, and then you lead them on with the rest of the joke in your clips. Yeah, exactly. And honestly, that takes a fair amount of talent, my dude. Uh, thank thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't think I'm that talented. I'm just like I spend a lot of hours thinking what to put on and and how to edit everything, and and it finally comes together mm. pretty nicely. To, to me, memes are a language, and I love speaking memes. So like, you know, it's like seeing and seeing that stuff. I'm just like I get it. Like even if I don't get the exact feeling, you can get it through a meme. You know? Yeah. <laughs> My favorite it's, it's memes modern are poetry. SpongeBob memes. I love SpongeBob memes. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Big fan of the craft. <laughs> yeah, I love. There's there's one in particular from the SpongeBob memes that uh, it's mm -hmm. a, a video from the funeral of of the old dictator of Korea. Oh really? They had the the SpongeBob flute song on, on top of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Love that thing. <laughs> it's a vibe, like. yeah. uh, God, dude. So, uh, uh, wh where did you uh, learn the video edit? I'm self-taught. I I just want to think. What's the best way to edit video? And I think it's uh, Vegas, like Sony Vegas. But that cost mm -hmm. like seven hundred euros. So I was like, nope. And and I downloaded it. That's that fair. That version of of Adobe Premiere, Adobe Premiere. Sorry, Adobe Premiere. Mm, and and mm -hmm. I downloaded a very official version that I absolutely play, pay every month for. I know, and I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. We're and all there. <laughs> then I was like, I want to do this. How do I do it? And I, then I Google Adobe Premiere, like cut video, and watch for a tutorial online or something that explains it to me. Mm. So that's why I wanted to learn because I think it's a useful sk skill to have. And I thought, mm -hmm. might as well make something fun along the way, you know? In the modern mm -hmm. age, I feel like it's a useful skill, and then also I think the more important thing it's like, what's the barrier between you and making videos? The fact that you need to put the videos together and in like a fun way, and so it's like, well, now you have to learn video editing. Um, mm -hmm. Like I didn't really want to when I started, but then when I did, like you know then you can start putting out the content you want to you're like this is the content i want to make <laughs> like, honestly it's crazy exactly. how like the internet age has like made the barriers to entry uh like to be any sort of creative anywhere has really just made like the creative spaces that people normally don't like use as much very accessible to like pretty much everybody and like it, it's just crazy how shit has advanced i'm like Yes. I'm happy that we live in this age. It's yeah. super cool because you have everything available on your phone, like, or, or mm -hmm. on your computer. Like, you want to know anything, you literally can can learn it through the phone or the computer. And it's super cool because this way I've, I've learned some languages. I've learned, like, to edit video and, and to edit music. I've learned Photoshop as well. And some of the programming I know, like, at college, there was this subject that, that the first year of college that was like learn how programming basics you know and they mm -hmm. taught us java and and so i went to the the final exam and i i needed uh so we have the score from zero to ten and i need uh, a one one point seventy five to to pass mm -hmm. and i had uh zero point seventy five 
So I, I failed miserably. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, Oof. And, but I had studied, and I thought I, I knew how to program well. And then um, I had like two weeks until the, the second exam, because if you fail, you have another chance. I don't know how you say that in in English. Mm -hmm. But we say the re-evaluation. Mm -hmm. yeah, for okay. those two weeks, I just watched online tutorials. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the exam, just having watched the online tutorials, and I got a nine. Jesus, time. that's crazy. Because they teach you so much better in, in the internet, like on the internet, that mm. at college sometimes. And it's everything you have, you want to, you can learn through mm -hmm. the internet. It's really cool. Well, it's also because like the college, the college system really like it's very dependent on the teacher that you get versus on the internet. You can actually yes. shop around for like someone who teaches in the way that you learn the like you yourself Absolutely. can find the easiest to learn. And then you actually get it. It's it's freaking crazy. Also, Absolutely. we don't have that word in English because in the U.S. we don't believe in second chances. So when you fail a test, you just fuck. <laughs> yeah, you go, uh, <laughs> you go down there. You know, that's that's what <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Congratulations! You tried educating yourself. Now you're now you're a million dollars in debt. You know, and uh, <laughs> and you didn't exactly. even get an education out of it because you failed. <laughs> and now I expect you to grant like. Pick yourself up by your bootstraps and keep going. Like <laughs> Exactly. Okay, you want someone to help you with your loan? Get a job, you scumbag. <laughs> yeah, that's also crazy. Like colleges in the US are so expensive. I don't I don't understand. Yeah, it's like, uh like a it's becoming a real problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like here you can go to college for like my college is like one of the best colleges in Spain and it's two mm. k a year, like two k bucks a year. What? That's not that. What? That's, that's JC levels. That's two. That's JC levels. Exactly. Really. That's that's affordable. I can do that. You know. Yeah, in the US, it's like sixty thousand dollars, uh, oh, or easily. some shit like that. I don't know. Easily, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Without scholarships or anything, mm -hmm. you know, and without like any sort of financial aid, yeah, that's what you. Yeah. And if you're trying to go out of state into another part of the country, oh, God, they'll bro. charge you oh. even more oh. for it. Really? Oh. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? It's crazy. Yeah, yeah they can up to double your tuition if you go to, like, if you wanted to go to freaking, um, what's the one in New York? Harvard? No, which one is it? It's one of those Ivy League ones. But if you go over there to from California, I, th I saw this Reddit post, and they were like, they did the math, and had they, like, stayed uh, in New York for a year, they could have cut their tuition down by, like, 60%. Holy shit. It was ridiculous. Hmm. Now, I don't know how accurate that is, because I've never tried to actually do it myself, but, like, it sounds plausible, so I'm like, yeah. shit. Like, there's always a theme in, in some movies that I watch from the U.S. of people mm -hmm. owing money just because they went to college. And oh, yeah. That no, shouldn't be, that, it shouldn't be mm -hmm. like that. It shouldn't be, no. but it is. <laughs> 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 trust me if i could change it i would because that's definitely something i believe in is let's just get the education on them let's, let's do this people yeah. let's educate yeah. our populace we can then that way when the next COVID thing happens we're all educated you know we all know what to do yeah, we're and, ready and people wear masks we're rational masks. people you know I, I don't yeah know. <laughs> <laughs> We can't have people just being naysaying, you know, all the time. Because, <laughs> like, the, the fact that there's such a high barrier to entry for, like, basic education that most people need in order to survive in the job industry, especially, like, the constantly developing and more high-tech job industry, is ridiculous. Because then it, like, it basically makes the economy, like, worse because people can't spend nearly as much money and, like, it stunts the growth of gdp across the country so like there's a financial and greedy reason to make education cheaper but because people are so short-sighted they're like you know what let me just take all of the money i can now yeah. screw the future and it's, yeah. it's just it's just blatant greed on the part of the freaking uh education system yeah. it's ridiculous it's, it's absurd like here the private universities which i find expensive are maybe one tenth of what universities cost in the u.s Probably. Like the private ones. Probably. And mine is one of the most expensive public ones. If I went to, for example, the south and, and the south of Spain mm -hmm. and went to college there, it may cost like 1.2k a year or oh. something like that. Or 1.3k. Wow. See, now 
That's that's basically so, JC levels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I say yeah, this yeah. because here's the thing. People don't know about this all people in the US, uh, but like community colleges are the shit. Like Really? That's how you don't pay money into the system. Mm-hmm. You go to oh, yeah, community great. college instead of a, a four year university that's really prestigious. You get a really mm-hmm. good for the most part uh, like education, and then you transfer it over. You go to university, you save yourself at least two years of tuition. That's wow. the kind of workaround you have to do mm-hmm. because you can't go to a four year. <laughs> you go to community exactly. college, you learn your your you learn your general <laughs> division, your lower division uh, stuff, like all your general ed, and then then you can like you literally just go mm-hmm. uh, to college to specialize into like your major or whatever. I, I didn't know you could do that. And yeah. I didn't know community colleges were that good in the U.S. Oh, like, at least ours is. I, I can't speak to every community yeah. college in the United States. I can say, mm-hmm. boy, if you're in Sonoma County, at least until the whole COVID thing hit, probably one of the best junior colleges wow. around. Honestly, I think they actually said it was in the top five junior colleges in, like, the entire U.S. I think we were in the number one spot for, like, a good, like, 15 years. Um, it's just that a bunch, uh, there was one in New York that got like huge funds from like some big companies, uh, as a charity and they just like outspent us and had like better programs because they had the money for it. Um, and there was a couple other ones on the uh, East coast that like surpassed us. But yeah, one of my teachers was the, mar- uh, the head of the marketing team that made the black IPs like famous. Like he was the one who was like, how are we going to pimp them out to the masses? So like there's huge talent. From like every industry, there was a um, I don't know if you know what a Costco is, yeah. Okay. Um, but it's like a giant, gro- it's a giant grocery store chain, and um, she was uh, she was my uh, financial accounting teacher, and she was the head of their financial accounting department for like right. the entire West Coast of the U.S. for like a good like thirty years before she decided to retire and work at the JC. So like, there's a oh, lot geez. of people that like really know what they're talking about yeah. when you go there. Yeah, it's it's crazy. So, like, anyone in Sonoma County listening to this, go to the JC if you want to save some money on your education. Well, I I can't say that now because Zoom cha- classes changed the game, and I don't know if the quality True. is the same, but um, I'm sure that there's still great teachers there, that's for sure. And I'm sure there's, they still have the resources. I was going to say, mm-hmm. even for when I went to junior college and... I went through the math and physics because, like, that's what you have to do as, an, as a computer engineer. You have to take all the, you know, lower division math, physics, oh. whatever, you know, discrete math, go on and on. Blah, blah, blah. So, like, took those classes at the JC, end up going to UC Santa Barbara, and I end up being like, probably like, way more like well versed in the knowledge that I got in math and physics compared to some of my classmates just because it was taught like i don't know i won't say like i don't want to say it's me because in all honesty like my work ethic sucks i just thought that the teachers there really you know talk knew what they were talking about they're passionate about what they do and so i felt like i got a good education there that's really cool and then i brought it there and people are asking me like stuff that i thought like I thought you learned in, in calculus, and I'm just like, oh, wait, they didn't teach you that in your calculus class? I was like, well, it's not in that. It's that, like, you know, I just, you know, passed the class because, like, you're not really trying to learn the material when the, the education's not that good. You're just trying to pass the class. So you basically just cram. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, so, yeah, go community college. That's how you defeat the meme of the United States is you just go to community college and rock shit out so speaking of education how did how do you manage to balance you know your work education and your like creation content is there like a specific regiment you have or is it more of like a free flow thing that you work with your schedule so many people my friends tell me like how how do you do it yeah like we're in exams and and you made the video and and all that how do you manage your time and the answer is i don't (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's that's why i fail school no Uh, (laughs) Uh, I try to, like, it's a, li- a little bit like, w- when when I'm not editing, I'm, like, working mm-hmm. or playing Smash. So, if I, for instance, play Smash, like, an hour and a half a day, mm-hmm. that hour and a half com- goes to editing when I 
gathered enough clips to make a video. Okay, so your free time really like builds into your work. It's like a crucial part of it. Yeah, or, or if I'm very tired of studying because I've been like doing some code for like two hours. I want to take a break. I go, I go drink something like mm. like a glass of water or something to cool down and edit for a, a couple hours. You know, it's it comes okay. and goes depending on on how I feel. You gotta love the work you do. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, uh, but sometimes it feels like work, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> when I was still doing math in 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 college, I I literally I had an exams uh, like let, let's say it's a Saturday and I had an exam on Monday mm -hmm. and I was like I could study for this exam but I know I'm gonna fail anyway so let's edit you know <laughs> and now with with computer science I'm. I enjoy what I do a bit more, so so I manage both on the same level, kind of. Mm -hmm, yeah, I think at least for me, and this is something I should have done more, is find projects that like you want to work on, and that really, at least for me, drives more of like the wanting to learn uh, yes, like computer exactly. science and all that stuff. Because for me. Man, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Computer science, computer engineering, all that crap, it's so dry sometimes. You have to make it worth your while. You have to be like, I'm gonna get something out of this knowledge. It's like, what do I wanna do? Okay, I wanna make this program because that helps me find news or something. I don't know. You have to like yeah. make it work for you, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You have to be invested in the outcome. Yes, because when, mm -hmm. when I'm in college and we're, we're doing a subject now called software engineering and it's about working in a team and agile methodology but it's all the bullshit they tell you in a, in a coaching session just <laughs> directed to computer science and i think we could have like th this subject we could have ignored it not not do it and we could have made something more interesting you know like i don't know i'm, I'm really into video games as you can prob probably tell mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. I, I got into computer science just to learn how to make a video game. Like, I wanted to program my own video game. And so, but, yeah. you think about it and, and you say, this subject could have been replaced with, with one where they teach you everything they're teaching you, but instead of telling you, yes, you have to copy Facebook, or you have to, because we have to copy a, a famous app, we could have made a mm -hmm. free project that we're invested in and that we can choose. And, and then the subject would be like 20 times more enjoyable. But yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, I mean, that's why it's, uh, that's what I learned, like, now, now that, you know, we do this podcast, we you know, do YouTube, all this stuff, it's like, creating's fun, and it's like, you have to make whatever you do, like, part of that, to, you know, you Absolutely feel agree. alive. Yeah. I don't want to feel like I'm working for the man. <laughs> yeah. You have to get a sense of fulfillment from what you're doing. Yeah, we, we've we talked to a, a good amount of, uh like, programmers, and guys that are making games that are, have made games for school and they're they're all about it and they seem uh, uh, pretty invested because of that because they are enjoying what they're creating exactly and that's yeah. like part of the curriculum yeah because when when you like if you they tell you just copy facebook you know what you have to do you have to go into facebook see what how it works and then make it yourself but if they tell you make a video game, you can use your imagination and, and it, it it incentivizes creativity, you know. And mm -hmm. I think that's so much more fulfilling mm -hmm. than just copy pasting code from Facebook. I well, think. and then I'll give you an example for like with, with yeah. what I was doing because like I was doing like a mix between hardware and software. So like we, you know, it's like doing Arduino stuff and things like that. And so for one project, uh, we were asked to like use this uh this embedded controller if you will to, to like do something with it and it's like okay uh what can i do or what what, what do i enjoy i'm like i like cannabis <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm just like i want to make an oven that like a mini oven that i can put over a bong and like a like a bowl piece and basically vaporize my cannabis <laughs> instead of like using a flame and so you use like a you can use a controller to do that and like control the temperature so that when it's the right temperature then it tells you it's okay and then you know, do the thing. Unfortunately, there was some other issues that like last minute didn't like make the project fully realized. But like we had the code working, it just like it was a hardware issue more than it was a software issue. 
uh, at the end of the day because like we ran the simulations like it was gonna work uh, it just sometimes and this is the other thing you learn about hardware and this is what blows just like sometimes your shit doesn't work or whatever for whatever reason you scuff the hardware you, you shorted something on accident whatever and then that shit don't work mm-hmm. anymore. And then you're like, well, fuck. And especially if you've already waited two weeks for shipping for this one thing that you ordered. And now you have to wait another mm-hmm. two weeks for it to get shipped <laughs> again. Like, you're just like, nope. So sorry, that's what we got for our project. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, But yeah, so like I said, like, channeling your passion into something that, like, works for you. Yeah, be- what we just said about uh, the hardware, like, taking two weeks to ship. It's why I don't do hardware <laughs> because I'm, I'm like I, I would like to make something <laughs> with our Arduino or something, but it's it's boring to wait, you know. So oh uh, yeah, I just <laughs> go go for the coding and and let someone else handle the hardware. Have you ever uh, thought about with with the other skills that you have, your Smash Bros skills? your video editing skills, you ever think about, like, streaming or, uh, um, I guess, uh, uh, do, or even video editing for somebody else or something, like, is that, like, a side hustle? I, I would like to, to video edit by some for somebody else, like, typical thing that there's a famous streamer that they just play on stream and then they upload highlights or something like that, mm-hmm. but I don't think I'm good enough or that I have enough like content to show them my editing style, you know. I think I, I would need to have like seven or eight videos like to tell them, look at this. But my channels get pretty little now. Like it's it's quite a small quantity amount of videos. So I, I don't have enough content to like as a curriculum, you know? Mm-hmm. Like like and, building a resume. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And and studying I and streaming myself, I doubt I could with my internet. Just <laughs> <laughs> but you're just starting up. I mean, this is this is the road, so you're doing yeah, exactly, doing awesome. If if I if I get myself to finish, like I have like four ongoing projects now. If I get myself to finish, then maybe then I can I can talk to someone and tell them, hey, would you like me to edit for you? You say, check out my memes. I got some things exactly. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got some Fuego, and if you're not interested, I'm taking my shit elsewhere. You know? Yeah, you're lost. Mm-hmm. You're okay. lost, exactly, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you've just been uh, uh, creating content for uh, how long? Not long. Uh, I I uploaded like well, I, if I go to my YouTube page, there's videos like there's really old videos that I have on private because it just. I was playing a game and there was a bug or something that I found funny and I grabbed my phone and I filled it with my phone and and I uploaded it to YouTube to save it for myself. Mm -hmm. But I I started Mm -hmm. to get serious, like to say, I want to do that. I want to try to make something original and different. Like Mm -hmm. early this year, like I started editing like maybe 11 months months ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like if I look at my smash clips from my my Mario Brother video, which is the first one I uploaded, they are from November or December from 2019, mm-hmm. and and then I was like three months editing, and, and on March I uploaded the video. Okay, very nice. That's so yeah, awesome. it's fairly fairly new. Yes, mm-hmm. dude, up and come. You're, I mean, you said like eleven <laughs> months. I mean that. I mean, it, it almost follows the same timeline of when I started doing all of this. So like, it, it's nice to know that like, yeah, there was someone that just decided that the, on a whim, I want to do this, yeah. and that's kind of what happened yeah. with me as well. Yeah, it was like I I saw the, the pandemic coming, and I thought I need something to do. So <laughs> honestly, that's fair. Honestly, honestly, yeah, like I, I was like four months in this room because I couldn't get out, well, I, I could go out to the living room, mm. you know, but I couldn't get out of my house, so I was like, yeah. might as well use them to do something, because if not, mm-hmm. I'm gonna go crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, and honestly, that's one of the few bright sides of COVID, is that it's really, like, allowed people to, like, express themselves creatively in ways they normally, like, simply wouldn't have the time to do. Yes. Like, don't get me wrong, it's terrible, the economy is crashing, like, people are dying, it's awful, but, you know, you gotta take the silver lining <laughs> where you can, you know what I mean? Yeah, 
when it hit in, in Spain, mm -hmm. it hit like it was. It seemed like it was gonna be a breeze, you know. It it was like twenty infected people. Everything was under control, and then suddenly, what? We have twenty thousand infected. And it just spiraled out of control, and mm -hmm. nobody kind of expected it to go so big then, because we were like the third country to have it or the fourth. Uh -huh. And and it was like. It's shit because there's a lot of people dying. The the hospital rooms are are like coddled with people. You know, there's there's no mm -hmm. room for anyone. Mm -hmm. And and my girlfriend studies medicine, so she had to, she was really close to to everything during the mm -hmm. pandemic. And I thought, yeah, it's it's shit, but at least I can read books and I can, you know, learn some something to keep your mind busy. And, yeah, exactly. Okay. So. Even though it's bad, there are some good things to it, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God, I envy those low numbers, because here in the U.S., it's just freaking yes. spiking it's everywhere. It's crazy. Yeah, there's like uh, almost a million cases just last week. Like, oh, was that it? Just last week? Uh, <laughs> dude, it's, it's uh, our COVID response. We're killing it. Dude, people, wear just wear a mask. <laughs> Dude, if you're in the U.S. right now and you're listening to this, if you don't wear a mask, then fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Controversial. <laughs> well, no, look, realistically, though, <laughs> screw those people. Because those people who don't wear masks, 99% of the time, they're like, oh, I have a medical issue. I have really bad asthma. I can't wear the mask. You know how many videos there are online of people with, like, lung cancer and stuff <laughs> they're like walking around with their masks and like i'm literally dying of cancer and i can do this yeah, and i'm like come yeah, on yeah. okay like, none of those people have any sort of genuine gripe like any genuine argument for as to why they should not other than it hurts their feelings and they don't feel comfortable wearing the mask no, screw you because get over yourself the government and Bill gates are trying to control our minds and the masks are the first step <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> Preach. And it, no, it's 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 even crazier because think about it. Like without this whole COVID thing, things like QAnon, like they were already things, but they exploded yes. once COVID happened because yes. everyone's in their house, and it, like it just spread over the internet like a disease, kind of like COVID. And like yeah. there are legit people with like college degrees that think that if they go and get a freaking um a test, they are freaking they're getting microchipped in their brain. And then, yeah. but that's only a minority. These huge, like, freaking groups of people. Like, I know one person, uh, tangentially. Like, I don't know her personally, but I know of her. She believes that freaking um, the test is uh, secretly the mark of the beast and is like tainting you with the power of Satan. And they don't want to take uh, any vaccine that they could get because they think it'll make them sterile. Like, that's literally that's that's a plot to a TV show. Like, that's not real. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not reality but this is something uh, you've seen like in like typical tv show where they show trashy people doing trashy stuff there would be yeah. one in, in the walmart like who has shit its pants that would say yeah they're trying to get in our minds the, the typical person with the, the eyes super open yeah the, like the crazy eyed freaking yeah, exactly. like tinfoil yeah. hat wearing crazy person <laughs> yeah, exactly. they're turning the freaking frogs gay <laughs> <laughs> yeah Alex Jones is, is golden. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I love that man. He shouldn't have been banned from YouTube. <laughs> Dude, I hate him, but the memes. I can't, so I, mean, I yeah. can't hate on the memes. <laughs> it's, it's like when Donald Trump became president, I was like, well, shit, but also... <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that's how everyone saw it. They're just like, oh boy, US oh. has <laughs> suddenly become a meme, like, a meme factory. Like... <laughs> And honestly, it was true, though. The memes never stopped. Every tweet was a meme in of itself, okay? It was just coming out of the woodwork. Remember Kofei? Okay. Oh, I remember Kofei. Kofei, that was probably <laughs> one of my favorite memes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Kofei, yeah. Uh, but anyways, I think uh, uh, I think we're almost at oh, the yeah. end. Time-wise. Time. Um, Dude, uh, so Mark, uh, do you have a small content creator that you've been uh, uh, currently enjoying? Yeah, well, I have a a friend called Adrian, and and he's really fucked up in the head, and he used to <laughs> upload videos. He doesn't upload them anymore, but uh, I used to have him make the videos, and mm -hmm. and yeah, he had like 
I don't know, maybe 200 or, or 300 views per video. But mm -hmm. it was it was amazing. He was he's so creative with with what he does, and and he edits really good. He studied actually to like filmmaking and and all that. And mm -hmm. I found his videos so fucking funny. I mean, they're they're in Spanish, but this one I am sending you one right now. He's in mm -hmm. doesn't have any any voice, and it's just called the Circle of Life, and it just shows like a bunch of videos of wildlife, you know, like. Uh, zebras and lions running through the savanna with a song of there's a song so sounding on the on the back and and then he cuts mm -hmm. to to pictures of barbecues and and people eating beef and meat <laughs> <laughs> it's so absurd but mm -hmm. I just find it so funny I can help it <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's his YouTube channel name Barry Kello. Barry, Barry the name, and K E E K E L L O. You have the the link in the in the PDF. Uh, yes, Barry Kello. Barry Kello. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's. I'm, I'm looking at the video right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll be checking that out later. Yeah. It looks like a minute Definitely. and a half. Oh, it looks like an absurdist YouTuber, which I am stoked to watch <laughs> yeah. more of right now. So this is awesome. <laughs> one day I was because I I know him from when I studied uh, drums, and and one day he came to me and he told me, "Yo, I'm thinking of a video idea, but I need your help." And I was like, "Okay, what do you need me to do?" And he said, "I need you to lie on the ground, put ketchup on your back, and then I will clean with a with a with a loaf of bread." I was like, "No." I'm not, doing that, I'm not doing that. And then I, I helped him anyway. And, and the video is called The Soap Man. It's about a man who sells soap. And it's a soap so clean that if you clean yourself too much, you may die. The, the, the soap man. Yeah. The soap man. Damien, absurdist humor is what YouTube is founded on. Like, do you exactly, remember yeah. like old school Smosh? Yeah, holy shit, yeah. I, I was wild. a big fan of Smosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, back in the day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, cool, man. Uh, dude, I guess this is your chance. Uh, tell our audience uh, where we can find you. Well, uh, I'm not on many social networks, but if they find me on YouTube, just Google my name, Mark Sulevages. Or if they have an Instagram, I upload some shit posts there. It's at uh, Senor Sule in, in Catalan. It's S E N Y O R, which means Mister, and Soler, which is my surname. So yeah, that's that's the only social networks I can plug. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will be coming for the shit post. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Or well, I was on TikTok until I got banned, or you know what? So. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's the sh social network I'm on. Hell yeah! Oh, awesome. awesome, indeed. Very nice. Do you, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's gonna be it for today. You Wait, find... hold on, hold on. I want to get one oh. last. I want to plug right now. Plug one last right meeting. now. All right, here's the thing. Please don't sue us. It's gonna go under probably. Uh, <laughs> no we, way! Yeah. What? And when? The only Where? way that we don't go under is if you buy those awesome t-shirts that we have. Uh, because that would be awesome. Anyways, so buy that shit because it really supports us and it tells us that, hey, you like our shit posty, uh, you know, podcast. And then we'll, we'll do more of this shit because we love it. So. Also, the logo is pretty cool. What do you think, Angel? You like this shit? I think it's phenomenal. <laughs> I got a shirt myself. You really okay. sell it, bro. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Killed it. Right. Also, maybe something's happening to the logo. Who knows? Okay, let's call it a tease. Okay, follow us on Instagram and get teased a little more. Oh, did someone say winter fashion for the channel? Yeah. Oh shit, that sounds rad. <laughs> <laughs> we could say that, but I'll never tell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways. 
Okay. That's that. We're about After that here. little infomercial. Oh, you can find us on Etsy because that's that's all I can do right now. That's all. I, that's all I got. So. All right, cool. You can find all them links, the Etsy links, the Instagram, YouTube, whatever. We got uh, all of Mark's stuff in the description below as well. Uh, dude, thank you for coming on, man. This is cool. Thank you so much for letting me. <laughs> dude, of course. And as for all of you sponsors out there, thank you all for sponsoring us with your time. Please don't please don't for legal reasons, content, content, we should mention that all sponsors are not actually sponsors, and we only mention them for the sake of parody. All related brands and intellectual properties are owned by the respective companies, and the content of this podcast does not reflect the views or values of those given companies. Seriously, Seriously. please don't sue us. We have no money. I just realized what I was wrong. I want the ability to just not say so uh, imagine how much more productivity you could get. Out yeah, of you spend like how how many years do you spend sleeping? A like, third of your life. Yeah, yeah like, like a third of your life. So sixty years would be like twenty years of your life you spent sleeping. Yeah. And here's the other thing about sleeping: is every single time you sleep, it's just a free trial of death. Sample every <laughs> single time you sleep, and you know what sucks about that free trial? It's freaking good. Like, <laughs> it's a good free trial. You want to like just make it permanent, and then you're like, you wake up.